In this video, I'll be showing you how I set up my Visual Studio code, including my theme, fonts, extensions, and how to clean up some of the clutter in the output. First of all, let's set up the font. I use a font called Brass Mono made by Peter Fonseca. I will link the GitHub repository down below. From here, you'll just click the download here link and click this brass mono.zip file. Once that's done downloading, go to your downloads folder, right click and extract all, and I'll extract it in the same folder. Then in here, I'm gonna control select just the regular brass mono files and then right click and click install. Okay, next, let's open up VS Code, then click this cog wheel down here and click Settings. Under Font Family, just replace this with Brass Mono Regular and press Control S to save. Then we can look back at our test.py file and see that we now have our new font active. I'll admit it's a little hard to tell, but I promise it's changed. Okay, next, let's set up the theme. Over here, click on the Extensions tab and search for Synthwave. And you should see Synthwave 84 by Rob Owen. This is the theme that I use. So you'll just click Install here. And just like that, our theme has automatically updated. Okay, next we'll clean up our outputs. You'll notice when I run this test file, we get all this clutter down here. To clean this up, we will be modifying the command line interface profiles. So if you're running VS Code on Windows, it will use PowerShell as the default terminal. However, to make this process applicable to Mac and Linux users as well, I'm going to use git bash instead, which is available on all operating systems. If you're in Windows though and want to use PowerShell, I will show you how to do it in PowerShell also. For those of you wanting to use git bash, if you click this little drop down arrow next to the plus sign and you don't see git bash, you'll need to install it. To do that, you'll just want to go over to git-scm.com slash downloads and download the git installer for your operating system. Once you have that installed, restart VS Code, click the cogwheel down here, then settings, and search default profile. Here you will see a drop down to select your default terminal. Select git bash and save. Or, if you're wanting to use PowerShell in Windows, it should be selected by default, but double check. Okay, and now when we run our code, it runs in Git Bash, or Windows PowerShell if you selected that. Okay, next, to help with some of the decluttering, let's go back to the Extensions tab and search for Code Runner by Jun Han, and install this. Once that's installed, click this cogwheel again and click Settings. In here, type Code Runner. Scroll down a bit until you see this code runner executor map and click edit and settings.json. In here, find the code runner.executor map and find all the languages you'll be coding in. In my case, I'll be using Python. So at the beginning of the string associated with Python, you'll want to say clear and then two ampersands. This is the git bash command to clear the terminal. So it will clear the terminal first and then run your Python file. If you're using PowerShell instead, put CLS semicolon here instead. This is the PowerShell equivalent. Now, you'll want to do this for any other language you think you'll be using here. All right, so once we're finished here, we can save this and close out. Next, in the code runner settings, scroll down a bit more and you'll want to select run in terminal. So now we can close out of our settings and when we run our code, we now get a much cleaner output and every time we rerun the code, it clears the previous output. All right, so now there's still a little bit more cleaning up that we can do here. If you're running PowerShell, you can just skip this next section. But if you're using git bash, you'll want to open up the file explorer and find your git folder. In my case, it's in my program files. So in here, you want to search git-prompt.sh. And we're looking for the one that's in the etc folder. You want to right click on this and open with Visual Studio Code. So in here, you can see how these commands match what is displayed down here in our output. We change to green text, then display the user in that green text, then change to purple, and then display the system, and then change to yellow, and display the directory. 
Now you can customize all of this to your preferences, but I actually like having a directory here. So that's the only thing I'll keep. I also like this green color. So for me, I'm just going to comment out these lines. So I only turn the text to green and then show the directory. Next down here, you can also change the dollar sign. I'm going to use an angled bracket like this. And this line changes the color of the angled bracket to white, but I like this green color used up here. So I'll copy this line and paste it down here. But now any output after the angled bracket will be green. I want the text after the angled bracket to be white. So I'll remove this line and paste it here after the angled bracket so that any text following it will be white. All right, so after you've made your changes, press Control S to save. And you'll notice it will not allow you to save unless you save as administrator. So I'll click retry as admin down here and then click yes. Okay, and now we can go back to our code and run again. And there we go. Now our output is all cleaned up. Now if you're running git bash, this is the end of the video for you. For PowerShell users, what you'll want to do to clean this up down here is to open up PowerShell as administrator. Then enter test-path dollar sign profile. If you get false here, it means you don't have a profile running. So you'll want to create one by typing new dash item and then dash path dollar sign profile dash type file and then dash force. All right, now we want to edit our profile. So type notepad dollar sign profile. In here, you'll want to put function space prompt space and then curly braces. Now you can edit the prompt here however you'd like. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and just paste the prompt that I use, but feel free to modify it to your preferences. This first line gets the current path. The second line converts it to a Unix style path, which I find looks nicer. This third line creates a new line just for some added padding. Then we write the path on the fourth line in green text. And then we print an angled bracket here in green and add this no new line so that we can continue typing on that same line. So now we can save this file and then go back to your PowerShell and do dot dollar sign profile. If you get this warning that running scripts is disabled on this system, then all you need to do is type set dash execution policy remote signed and then press enter and then here press Y. Now you should be able to run dot dollar sign profile. All right, and now go back to your VS code and run your script. And there we go. Our output is all cleaned up now. If you found this video helpful, be sure to leave a like. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.